Hi, today I'm going to go over a MacBook Air that wasn't turning on. I'm not going to do it in real time because I was busy and I also had more bullshit ass video problems, which I'm pretty excited that I've solved. I've switched over from using uh, FFmpeg to VLC, so it doesn't, it, there's some issue with video for Linux drivers with FFmpeg. Again, God bless FFmpeg, God bless the fact that it is free and that it is a bunch of cool shit, but it doesn't always work, so moving on. So this is not going to be real time, but I am going to walk you through the things that I did, the troubleshooting steps that I took. One of the first things you should look for if the computer charges the battery, and it seems to charge the battery. It doesn't seem like it's really that liquid damaged. It seems like everything is in good condition, but it doesn't turn on is do I have a working 5 volt rail? So there are different power rails in the machine. There's SO, S3, S5, and these are power states. So you have S5, which is off, you have S3, which is sleeping, and you have SO, which is on. So even if you do have your 5 volt rail and your 3.3 volt rail, do you have SO versions of those? So you have this sleeping version of that rail, but then when the computer actually is time to turn on and the fans to spin and the CPU to work, there's a separate version of that rail that gets derived from the original S5 rail. So you'll have the S5 rail, which is pretty much the 5 volts or the 3 volts that's showing up while it's off or sleeping. And then from that rail, there's a little switch that gets clicked that says, okay, now it's time for the SO version of that to turn on. And the SO version is what's going to send power to the CPU and all the other stuff so that the computer can actually start computing and working. Now in this case, there was 5 volts, but there was not 5 volts for the SO rail. And I'm going to go through a little bit of the troubleshooting process and what I did to figure out what was wrong. So let's turn over to the schematic here. I have to do the video all the way over there or else you won't see me because the light is so ridiculously blinding from my table that when I'm next to it in regular light, you, you practically can't see me. All right. So, now I had PP5E S3. Let's just let's search for that. Let me open the board view so I can actually find out where that I was coming from, so I can show you. Da da da. Okay, so U7501. Okay. Okay, so here is where the PP5E S5 comes from. Right here. You can't see that. Zoom. VREG5, PP5V S5. So I have that voltage. That voltage is there. But I don't have PP5V SO. And again, if PP5V SO is what's going to get, it's, it's powering all these different components in the machine. Like again, keyboard backlight. You, need, you, you don't need that to be on uh, when the computer is off. That's why there's different power rails for the different power states of the machine. Again, do you want your keyboard backlight on when your computer is off? No, which is why there's a separate PP5VSO and PP5VS5. So let's keep scrolling down here to see where PP5VSO comes from. If we scroll down eventually, we'll find it. By the way, if you want to know what, how I know what power voltages need to be here or what voltages need to be where, there's a list. So see this list over here of all this crap? This is literally just a list of the different power uh, lines that are in the machine so you can see if they're there. Like it starts with the important one, PP bus G3 hot, which is what everything winds up coming from in the machine. You check that, and you can just go down the line here checking that all these voltages are here. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit Control F, you're going to type uh, this in here, you're going to see what component it's hanging off of, and then you go to the board view, and then you see wh uh, where that is, and then you measure for it. So that's pretty much that. So let's, so for example, let's say you wanted to see if PP3V42 underscore G3 hot is there. Let's just, PP3V42 underscore G3 hot, right? So you're just going to hit enter, 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 blah, blah, blah. And eventually you'll find something that it's hanging off. So again, you can do this really with anything. But let's just, yeah, you know, let's just fucking check in at U1950, right? I'm just choosing any point. So you go here, you hit U C, you get U1950. Okay, that's this little piece of crap over here. All right, and then you find out which tab of it has PP3. Okay, so it's this tab. Now, you don't know this because it's not in front of you, but th this small component actually is not going to have uh, the, uh, it's not going to have 
pro uh, legs that you can see, so you'll have to find a pro point. Now in this program on the bottom over here, it's going to show you the pro points. Let me just lift this up a little so you can see. So right over here, it says probe 853. You can't see that, but hopefully you trust me that I'm not bullshitting you. And you do this, and it's going to show you where that probe point is. So I can go over here, where it's red and lit up, like this over here. And then I can just measure here and go, is PP3V42G3H there? Is 3.42 volts over here? And if it is there, great. That's a power supply. I can check off my list. If it's not there, then I know that that's what i got to start trou troubleshooting. Uh, or you can just do this. There's a cool thing with this program. You go yeah, PP3V42G3H. Uh, and it'll actually show you every place on the board where this pops up. So you'll see it in, in green and cool, you know. It's pretty cool. So that's by the SMC where there's a lot of 3.42 volts. And yeah, that's, that's that. So, all right. Again, I don't sell these. I don't redistribute them in any way. I simply purchase them off of places on the internet where it's available to any Tom, Dick, or Harry with a PayPal account. And then I just use them for the educational. And again, I, uh, I don't redistribute these in any way, shape, or form. Do not ask for them. I do not redistribute them. I simply purchase them off of the internet. You can simply Google for a schematic. And it, where there are places where any Tom, Dick, or Harry could spend 20 bucks and they send you the schematic and the board view so that you can use them. And in this case, I'm using this for the educational purpose of teaching you how to troubleshoot a dead board. So back to my PP5VSO. So I had PP5VS5, I measured that, and then all the places PP5VSO was supposed to be, I didn't get it. One of the places that I measure for PP5VSO on this machine is actually on the fan connector because it's, it's just the first thing that pops into my head. Like as soon as you plug the newer airs in, they turn on. So the cool thing about the newer air, the second you plug the power adapter in, you don't have to go fucking around trying to find the two pads to short to turn it on or get a keyboard. The f thing about these airs is that they turn on in the second the power is attached. So if you attach power, the second you attach this MagSafe, it knows, switch me to SO, turn the fuck on. And uh, so if I don't have power in the fan connector at that point, I know that there's uh, something wrong. So let's see where PP5ESO gets started. Now, one of the things you should know about most of these chips is that they have something called enable pins on them. Let me show you what that means. All right. Let me show you something. So right over here where it says EN, see this stuff right over here? EN1, EN2. Usually there's 3.3 volt at these enable pins. There's usually 3.3 volt at that enable pin that's going to tell it to turn on. Sometimes it's a lower voltage. Sometimes it's a higher voltage. It really just depends on the chip that you're using and what you're doing. Just making sure I'm still recording because I don't trust this computer. And that's pretty much that. So if you're not getting a voltage, one of the things that you should do is see if it's actually enabled. So one of the things I was doing once I was looking for PP5VSO, the first thing I want to do is see how it is created, where it comes from. So let's find that shit. All right. Yawn, yawn, yawn. This is a, I'm finding all the stuff that PP5VSO is powered off of, but I'm not finding where it comes from. Here we go. Okay, see this? 5V SO switch. You see what I was talking about? So I have power. I have power when it's in the S5 state, which is not on, but I don't have any power in the SO state when it's off. That's no good. That's worthless. That's useless to me. So I need the SO. So here is PP5 VSO out, right? Let me zoom in a little more because I know that the setup sucks balls for showing you stuff on the screen. PP5 VSO. This is fed by all the, so I had voltage here, right? I had PP5V underscore S4 RS3. So this was actually, sh this, this crap was showing up. What wasn't showing up is this, P5V SO underscore EN. Now remember what I said, you should always look for these enabled tabs. So if you have a certain voltage that's not showing up, see what's producing that voltage. And if the chip that's producing that voltage has an EN tab or even if it, or an ON tab or something like that, like, you know, turn on, use your common sense and say, maybe I want, this is not working. Maybe there's no voltage at the enabled tab or the ON tab. And again, uh, he, sometimes it's called EN, sometimes it's called ON. The reason I know this is because it says over here, this voltage going in says EN. So even if I didn't suddenly realize that ON means ON, like turn on versus turn off, I could simply look over here and see that the voltage here is, it says EN. So that's what this signal is for. It's to enable. And again, if you truly don't understand what this means, see this number over here? 
The great thing about Google, the great thing about Google on the internet is that you can find an answer to almost anything. Again, just like I found the schematic do, by doing a simple Google search, I can also, for a lot of these chips, find data sheets on them. Now, you, when you get a data sheet for these chips, you're going to get some a fucking 70 page nightmare of information that you probably are not going to know anything about unless you're a damn PhD in engineering. But you don't need that. What I look for is, is the description of what the pins do. So I'll go to the pin out and it'll describe what each pin does at its tab. So if I go, let's say, pin 2 on and it goes, when this goes to 3.3 volts, it enables the chip. Then I know, you know, I learned something. So again, if you don't know what this does, Hit Control K. So you're gonna go again. I was trying to figure out how to use VLC to do the, some of the things I want, and I asked some forum questions, and the answers weren't really helping me. So I, I, I used I used this. I went Control C, and I typed in something, and I Googled, and I found information. And again, you have the same power so long as you have an internet connection. So let's follow the rabbit hole. This is what I call going down the rabbit hole, where you have a problem, and you just kind of dig down to find and down deeper and deeper and deeper to try to find out what to do. So, PP, okay, P5VSO underscore EN. What creates that signal? Okay. And you have all these rails that you're going to need not turning on. And they're all coming off of here. So this is coming off of here to uh, create the... So this is coming off of here to create the 5 volt enable. This is coming off of here to make the 3 volt enable. This is coming off of here to make the 1.5 volt enable voltage. And again, these are all going to be going to their respective ICs and telling them, turn the fuck on and start making power. And it's all coming from here. And when I measured over here, I got zero. I got nothing on the output. And I also had nothing over here on this input of PM Sleep S3. This resistor was good. All of these resistors I measured, they were just fine and dandy. So, and now this chip is powered off of 3.3 volts. And since most enables are work off of 3.3 volts, my best guess as to what this does, again, I'm guessing, because I have no idea what U8180 does. I don't, and I googled and I looked and I couldn't find anything. My guess is that when a certain input signal comes in, it takes that 3.3 volts and just sends it this way. Or this power just allows the chip to tell it to send this this way. Whatever, whatever the fuck it does, I honestly don't even know. I don't really give a shit. What I thought I could do, since uh, the enables on all these pins are 3.3 volts, is short this to this. Very, very high-tech repair. Again, right now, I'm, uh, the proper thing to do, the proper thing to do is figure out why the sleep signal, why this, is, why this whole shit is not working, why when I plug the fucking power in, why it doesn't send the SO enables and why it doesn't turn on. That's the right thing to do. The wrong thing to do, the wrong thing to do, is to short that 3.3 volts over here so that all these SO enables are on all the time. So, yeah, I wound up doing that. And that's what I wound up doing. Because, again, I need the machine to turn on. I need it to do something. Because when I follow further down the rabbit hole here, and I go PM sleep S3L... Uh, let's see. So that input signal that comes in here comes from the CPU. Let me tell you, I don't want to troubleshoot why my CPU is not putting out a sleep signal. That's not really how I want to start my day. I don't. Uh, no. I'm I, again. I don't. I'm not going to remove the CPU. I don't plan on balling the CPU. I don't. I don't. I don't want misery. I, I. I want to figure out what the actual problem is here first. So what I did. I just again. I just wanted to see where I stand at this point. I want to figure out how much time am I going to waste on this motherboard. How miserable is this board going to make me? So what I decided to do was short. Uh, these two together so that the machine would always be on. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you want to be asleep. It doesn't matter if you want to hibernate. It doesn't matter if you want to take a nap or go in a low power mode. Fuck you. You're staying on SO all the time. So I shorted that 3.3 volts to here and it turned on as soon as I hit the power button, which is great, which is beautiful, which is amazing. But it would turn on and boot and then turn off. And then turn on and then turn off. And then turn on, then finally stay on. So it was doing that thing where it was turn on turn off, turn on, turn off, and then it would finally turn on and stay on. And everything worked. I tried it. It truly did work beautifully. But again, it's on SO all the time. So I had it, so I charged it to 100% battery. I let the thing sleep on my table. Let's go back to this view here. Oh, so, I don't, so yeah, I let it charge overnight. I let it sleep on my table. And what do you think happened when I came back? It was at 18% battery. So I had this thing asleep on my table all night. And asleep on my table all night, I came back 18% battery, which is just complete 
push it. So because again, SO and S, it's always in SO. All those SO power rails are always on and are always being used. So the battery ran out completely, almost completely. Then I decided, let me reset the PRAM, just for the hell of it, let me try resetting PRAM. I reset the PRAM, and instead of doing that bullshit where it booted into, in a loop, it, like it would boot and stop, and boot and stop, and boot and stop, it would just boot instantly. And after I reset the PRAM, I figured, me, let's see if that helped with the whole sleep signal crap. I removed that little solder blob that you saw, and it worked. It did the little rebooting thing, I reset PRAM again, and it worked. Now, here's the thing. Resetting PRAM is what I needed to do to fix this problem. But how do I reset the PRAM on a computer that doesn't turn on? So that's why I forced it to turn on. So I forced it to turn on. I said, fuck you. You're getting SO power whether you like it or not. I turned it on. I reset the PRAM. Then after I reset the PRAM, I removed that solder blob. Because again, this computer is going to have dog shit battery life if it's in SO all the time. Like the computer is sitting there off and the SO power rails are working. That's no good. And now it works beautifully. And again, this is why you really, and this is why you got to use your brain. This is why I'm always trolling and saying, use your brain. Because, you know, I'm, I, I have so many people saying, like, I don't have five volts. What is the, vol the IC that creates five volts? I, again, I showed you the IC that creates five volts. It's fine. It works great. It's not the IC that creates five volts. There was a fault. I showed you the chip that takes that sleep signal and sends it on to create those enable voltages that turn all these chips on. That wasn't at fault. None of those resistors around were at fault. You know, people, like, they get this tunnel vision mindset where it's like, you know, this creates five volts, and there's no five volts here, so the thing behind it must be the thing that's broken. And no, 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 it, it's not that easy. It does, it's not that easy. It's almost never that easy. You don't get for the problem to be that easy. Don't do these monkey see, monkey do tricks. This, you know, like I saw this person fix their computer from not turning on that way, so I'm going to do the same thing. So don't apply somebody else's solution to your problem. You, you may have a different problem than me, but what I'm, what I'm trying to do with this channel is I'm trying to encourage you to go down the rabbit hole and figure out your specific problem rather than simply read some silly guide or somebody else's post on how to do something. If you want a great example of a complete clusterfuck, go to Mac Rumors and read the SMC troubleshooting thread. Again, God bless the people in this thread. Truly, God bless the people in this thread that are helping people, that are giving away their information for free and trying to make the world a better place through having more fixed computers. I support that. But at the same time, it's like 90 people all screaming at once, uh, you know, asking questions that, uh, and then they're getting answered by other questions, and then they're trying stuff that other people tried, like, I don't have three volts because R50 was, 57 was bad. And then they change R57, and then, you know, it still doesn't work because R57 was, was their problem, like, not yours. You need to solve your problem. I can't tell you, like, very often I'm not replacing chips to solve these problems. Most of the time I'm not replacing a chip to solve problems because the chips themselves very often are just fucking fine. Uh, the problem is somewhere else and it's just, it's your job to go down the rabbit hole and find it.